Hello, my name is Bill Young. I'm editor in chief of JCEM Case Reports. I want to thank you for participating in our peer review process, either as a editorial board member or as an ad hoc reviewer. In this brief video, I'd like to share with you some thoughts I have on how to go about peer reviewing case report manuscripts. And I'm just going to share my screen here. So I think doing peer review for case reports is maybe a bit different than other scientific articles. They're short. I would start by reading the article in full. Take notes as you go, note areas of lack of clarity or missing information on the clinical presentation or the lab testing or the treatment. And as you read, keep these questions in mind. First, is the case report concise and presented clearly? Is it well organized? Is it based on logical causality? Could A plus B really be related? Are the case and figures adequately anonymized? Now, all of our manuscripts require informed patient consent to publish the article, and, and showing full face photos is fine as long as the patient has given consent. But we should not be able to see the patient's name, for example, on the MRI scan or the CT scan or their uh, clinic registry number. Did you learn something from the case? Uh, will this be a good addition to the literature? So that was your first read. Now reread the article. These are all short and your clinicians, I, I think this is pretty straightforward to do. Think like a clinician and ask, does the title reflect the case? Authors should avoid a play on words or have comical intent. That frequently does not translate internationally. The title should not be a question and it should not be declarative. Does the abstract provide the key features of the case? Does the introduction set the stage for the case presentation? Does the case presentation have a logical flow? And does it make sense? What's missing? Is the diagnostic assessment appropriate? What is missing? Do the tables and figures tell you what a clinician needs to know. Does the description of treatment tell you everything you need to know about how the patient was managed? Anything missing on the outcome and follow-up section? Does the discussion provide perspectives on the case compared to what's been previously published? And finally, are the learning points accurate and do they highlight the key clinical pearls that you would take away from that case report. Now, your primary role is to judge the clinical content, but as you read, note these issues. Does the manuscript follow the required sections at JCM case reports? For example, you know, we start with an abstract, introduction, case presentation, diagnostic assessment, and so on. These are the headers that are required in every manuscript. And we do not allow um, new headers that are developed by the authors. Are there deficiencies in grammar, punctuation, or spelling? Are laboratory values provided in both conventional and SI units? Are normal reference ranges provided for each lab variable when it's first introduced? Are abbreviations expanded on first usage? Is capitalization reserved for proper names, the first word of a sentence, and abbreviations? For the AMA manual of style, possessive eponyms should be avoided. In other words, Cushing syndrome should be Cushing syndrome. 
Paget's disease should be Paget disease. These disorders do not belong to Cushing or Paget. They belong to the patient. Recognizing that many article submissions will be from clinicians in training, you are charged to evaluate the methodologic quality of the case report and work with the authors to optimize their submissions with respect to their case selection, ascertainment, causality, and reporting. I think our editorial board members and our ad hoc reviewers serve as coaches for the authors. When case reports are from areas of the world where resources are limited, recognize that a full complement of diagnostic tests or therapeutics may not be available. Remember when you wrote your first manuscript, receiving that peer review feedback can be daunting and devastating. Do not be harsh in your feedback. Be honest, fair, kind, constructive, and helpful. There should be three sections to your peer review feedback. First, a brief summary of the case. Start with positive feedback and comment on the significance and novelty of their case. Then the next section is major comments. These should be numbered. What are the key findings that are missing? What does not make sense? Is there logical causality? Are the figures and tables appropriate? Do the figure legends adequately describe the images? Are arrows missing in the figures? Minor comments, give examples of missing words, spelling errors, grammar issues. If needed, suggest review by an English speaking colleague or a medical editor. Both conventional and SI units should be used. When it comes to your final decision, you have several options. The first is to accept the manuscript. This means it's excellent and no changes are needed. To be honest, this would be a very rare decision for an initial review of a manuscript. I might give an accept review on one article per year. Typically, the accept decision would be on a manuscript that's sent back to you after a major revision. Minor revision means this is an excellent case report, and it will be acceptable once minor changes are made. For example, optimizing the figures, additional discussion or learning points, clarifications on clinical presentation or diagnostic assessment, revision of lab reference ranges. Major revision means that it doesn't meet the criteria for publication, but it has a good chance if major deficiencies can be addressed. Reject means there are major issues that clearly cannot be fixed. For example, case report on a common endocrine disorder like Hashimoto hypothyroidism with no unique diagnostic or treatment challenges leading to no novel learning points. And finally, the section of confidential comments to the editor. If this is where this is where you can expand on reasons you're suggesting either reject or accept. So I want to thank you for participating in our peer review process at JCM Case Reports. Um, your role is critical. It's critical to the success of our journal. And I hope this brief video provides you with some ideas on how to optimize your peer review feedback. Thank you again for watching this short video and uh, we'll look forward to your peer review comments.